This video is brought to you by Simply Carbon Fiber. More about them later in the video. This video's shop upgrade is huge. Here we have two Langmuir Systems Arc Flat welding table blocks. This is my first welding table. So weird. Now, if your memory serves you well, you'd realize that Langmuir Systems is also the company that makes the amazing plasma table that's changing my life. And I'm so, so freaking pumped to have their welding tables here. The thing that is awesome about a welding table, it's a metal table that's usually pretty flat and it's got these holes in it to allow you to clamp your metal items to the table. Now the awesome thing about Langmuir Systems welding table, this is a cast piece of iron. It's super freaking thick, it's super freaking heavy. Each one of these sections weighs over 150 pounds. But the amazing thing is that it's machined flat. No more am I gonna have to shim things off the floor to make sure they're square. I can build anything I want off this table, and I know it's gonna be perfectly flat. And it's just it's just gonna be freaking awesome. Gonna be able to weld on it, but I'm also just gonna be able to do all my other metal work on it. So huge, huge, huge thank you to Langmuir Systems. If you're interested in one of these or their plasma table, I'll have links in the description down below. Just like their plasma table, these things are really affordable. A lot of welding tables are just ridiculously expensive, but these ones, super fair price. Anyway, let's get to the Eclipse. In the end of the last video, we were about to start working on the chassis, and then disaster struck in the form of running out of big wire and gas, but got wire, got gas. So, it's time to start building the chassis for real. We're gonna start by mounting the subframe off the main frame rails that we're gonna make, and then we'll go on to the main hoop of the cage, then we'll make the back beams, mount the top hats. First things first, I have to measure the front. <laughs> So now I have the location of the two stock top subframe mounts in comparison to the top center of the wheel well. Have you ever tried to get something into a perfect spot with a jack and jack stands? Not fun! But yeah, it's good. It's perfectly centered in the car, perfectly as far back as it's supposed to be, perfect height, down to the millimeter. So, super happy with that. It took me like an hour and a half just to get that in the right spot. Now, what we have to do is tack it to the, the car. the damn thing. Ugh. Now I gotta freaking remeasure everything because I was an idiot and I bumped the jack. We got our little beam supporting the subframe. It's nice and solid, so it's not gonna move while 
we build our main tubes. This is a very exciting moment. Time to break out the Rogue Fabrication Tube Bender. Load in our tube. Now we're ready to bend. right at 45 degrees. I overbent a bit. That was actually 46.7 degrees. So let's go throw this one back in and try to do a 90. <laughs> this is nice. I overbent it yet again, but I think that's because I'm calculating or feeling out the uh, spring back a little bit too much. So we'll be able to use this kind of as a template. I could sit here all day practicing with the bender, but I'm a fan of learning by doing. Let's try to make a tube that connects the plate to back here. We got our two main frame rail tubes bent and made. Super, super simple. Just one 15 degree bend and a nice slice. Before we start actually putting those in, gotta go ahead and make a plate similar like what we did here for back there. Plates are done. The location of the subframe is super important in terms of alignment. And the only adjustment that this thing is going to have is the top hat. But we wanted to add another way to be able to adjust things. And so the mounts for the subframe themselves are, are gonna have lots of adjustment built in. So pretty much the entire subframe will be able to slide forward, backward, and kind of tilt left and right ever so slightly. Now I tried to make this mount one piece, which worked great. Um, with thin steel, but that didn't really work when the steel was 3 16 inch thick. You know, it's all, it's, it's bad. So we're gonna have to do it individually, individual parts. We're gonna make a little notch in the tube and then weld this into the tube. So let's do that.
The front subframe mounts are done. The frame rail bars are tacked in. Now it's time to build the back mounts. It'll be a little bit more difficult because they're at an angle. So it's gonna have to be a two piece thing so it can slide forward and backward while not changing degrees of angle. I just used the pulse setting on the HTP Invert TIG, and my God, it is a game changer. It pretty much helps you not overheat the piece that you're welding. It does that by not going full power all the time. So it does full power, then backs off, then full power, then backs off. So shout out to this machine right here. I'm gonna TIG weld more often because it's so much more fun that way. Now that these parts are done, it's time to break out the tube notcher. Well, the back subframe mount is all complete and tacked together. So it bolts to both the two back bushings and then connects with this bar and then goes up to this flange, which also unbolts. You can unbolt from there and can unbolt from the subframe there. Those are oval out, so the entire thing can shift forward and backwards. The same amount that the front bushing can. The black blanket is a welding blanket because I got sick and tired of getting burn marks all over my floor. You can really see it over here. I mean, the great thing about it on camera is you can't tell from here. Until you zoom in and then, oh yeah, it's bad. Only problem is that this thing is fiberglass and just from moving it around, I'm already itchy, which somehow I didn't think about. Now previously at the old shop, I did all the angles and calculations like that by hand. But that kind of takes a while and it's not as accurate. So I just got some new software. It's a program called Bentac and it's a cool program that will pretty much tell you how to bend your tubes. So I plugged in all the dimensions that I just measured and I also tell it what tube bender I have and what die I'm using. And then it tells you everything you need to know to bend the tube. Where each bend starts, where you clamp it into the tube bend, how many degrees you need to make each bend. You can even watch a little like program of it running. It also tells you the total length of it, how much it weighs, how much it costs, blah, 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 blah. It's very awesome. So I plugged in all those numbers. I need a 110 inch long piece of tube, two 30 degree bends, two 60 degree bends. Let's get to it. But real quick, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Simply Carbon Fiber. Simply Carbon Fiber is an online retailer for carbon fiber accessories. They make a whole bunch of stuff. They make watches, sunglasses, wallets, phone cases, jewelry, screen covers, screen guards, a whole bunch of stuff. Now all of Simply Carbon Fiber's products are made out of real aerospace grade carbon fiber. You guys have seen me show off their sunglasses before, their watches before, both of which I absolutely love, but they just sent me out their new super low profile carbon fiber wallet. It's the slimmest wallet, slimmer than even some of the super slim competitors. 
years. It weighs pretty much nothing because it's all just made out of one thing of carbon fiber. It almost doesn't feel real because it's so light. And even though it's super light, it's still super strong and sturdy because it's made out of carbon fiber. But guys, if you are interested in any of their products, I'll have a link in the description down below or up there in the cards. You can use my code GG10 to get 10% off store wide. So check them out. Huge thank you to Simply Carbon Fiber for sponsoring this video. Combination of this tube bender and that uh, that program, best investment ever. First try took me like you know, 20 minutes, and it's it's nearly perfect. Did mess up one thing. I bent the bottom angles a little bit too much, so the tube actually kind of goes in compared to the body a bit. But that's actually good because I wouldn't have been able to weld all the way around the bottom of the tube if it's right up against the car. It hugs both the corners perfectly. Freaking awesome! Ah, oh, it's so sick. <laughs> Now before we can actually do anything with the main tube, actually weld it in or whatever, we have to build some boxes for the tube to go onto. The box does two things. Number one, it's a thicker piece of metal that welds to the tube and then welds to the body in a, a larger square area. If you weld the tube straight to the body, that's thin sheet metal, get in a crash, it'll just rip out. So the box spreads the load of the tube pretty much. But the other thing that it does is that it raises the tube off of the actual car a few inches. That way you can build your cage, tack it all together, then remove those boxes, cage falls down, so you can get to the top of the weld. Then you put the cage back up, put the box back in, and then weld all the box stuff and the tube to the box. So otherwise, there's no way to get to the top of the weld, you know, because it's against the roof. So this is my first time having to make boxes. Shouldn't be too hard with a plasma cutter, so let's get to it. Also, off camera for the past two days, I've been, you know, making the shop a little bit nicer, fixing some of the issues. I cleaned out the plasma table, and then I put some real cutting fluid in it. I still need to put a little bit more water, but uh, it is much higher, because you guys were complaining about that. And then we also fixed all the air leaks, because a bunch more air leaks came back. I actually kind of feel like I can hear another one. I'm air leak paranoid. <laughs> but there was a few big air leaks that had come back, so the compressor outside had to keep clicking on, but they're fixed now. My dad was in town and he was helping me do that, so that was awesome. Let's build these boxes. Just kidding. The metal shop unfortunately did not have the right metal in stock, so I'm gonna wait a few days until they have it. Instead, we're gonna work on mounting the top hats, which is the last suspension point. When Mateo calculated the new geometry, he also moved the top hat location to have a little bit less caster. And so we have to build a jig, again, off the front of the subframe that locates the top hat. And then after we build that jig, we can start bending some tubes, doing some welding to actually mount a, a top hat or make a mount for a top hat.
Now at this point, I still hadn't gotten the metal I needed to make the roll cage boxes. So I decided to start working on covering up all the holes in the rear hatch area. I did this mostly just for aesthetics, but I also had to do this in order to be able to make a firewall in the future. The awesome thing that I discovered while making these plates is that I could take a picture of something on my phone import it into Fusion 360, which is the software I use to make all of my CAD stuff, and then just trace over it. And so making all these plates, it only took a few minutes and everything fit perfectly the first time. I've always wanted one of these. Well, I just got another call from the metal store saying the metal for the cage boxes. Gosh, the metal has been delayed again. So I can't, you know, sit around and wait for this metal to show up. So I went ahead and built the cage boxes out of just some 16 gauge steel. This will at least allow me to tack the boxes in, cut the main hoop to size, tack that in, and then begin working on the rest of the tubes. But that means I'm gonna have to cut everything out and undo all the tacks and just pretty much redo everything I'm about to have to do. But at least that means I can make some progress. The main hoop is in for the first time. Obviously, since it's just taxed together with 16 gauge steel on the bottom, it's still, um, you know, it moves around a little bit. The red strap will hold it in place along with the tack welds. At least it will hold it enough to uh, roughly build the next bars. So there's gonna be a bar coming up from the top corner, going down the line of the C pillar. And then once it reaches about there, it'll go to the very back of the main frame rail bar. I got the C-pillar bars and the start of the bars that will mount the top hats all bent up and somewhat cut to shape. Before we can do anything else, we have to actually make the real cage boxes and actually, you know, weld them all up. The good news? I got my metal. This little piece of metal was what was delaying me so much. I really gotta just buy a large variety of metal in large quantity and just do that like, you know, once a month. Just buying metal whenever I need it, it's so inefficient and I always have to wait. Um, we gotta remove the main hoop, remove the uh, boxes, disassemble them, trace them onto this metal, cut them out, boo ba 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 bowl, bing bong bong.
Well, I got the cage boxes all welded up, MIG welded on the inside, and TIG welded on the outside. Super happy with the way these came out. Super strong, super pretty too. So let's go ahead and tack these into the car, and then tack the main hoop back in. Well, I got the X tacked into the main hoop. I will be adding a harness bar as well, but I don't wanna do that until I have the new seats with the new rails so we can test fit it, make sure it lines up for the harnesses. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm yet again waiting for metal to actually build the real you know, mount plate for the top hat. And so I can't really make any more progress until then. But once we get that metal, I am gonna go ahead and, and tack in the top hat mounts. Then we can remove the jig and put the motor in there and start working on the motor mounts and the supports for the top hat. I don't want to do any of that until the motor is in just because these things I know they get pretty close to the motor so we want to make sure everything fits another kind of exciting thing got the garage door open it's 80 degrees outside today's the first day officially that I have sweat inside the shop <laughs> also also good news I got the head off of the new motor everything looks perfect so we'll get this motor put back together in the next video put the transmission on and then put it into the car and mount it if you guys want to watch that video right now you can head up there I appreciate everyone who does that if you guys want to get entered for your chance to win the car you can check out powerjdm.com every one dollar spent on either awesome merchandise like this Jinji Racing Co. hoodie or on car parts. They've got a bunch of car parts. We'll give you one entry to win this beast. And I do have an update on the giveaway in the next video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace out. Goodbye. the damn fucking thing.